This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Fiscally responsible, financial geniuses, monetary magicians. These are the things people say about drivers who switch their car insurance to Progressive and save hundreds. Visit Progressive.com to see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states or situations. When personal finance connects you to both your funds and the stuff that matters, that's money. And that's Cash App. Know what else is money? Using Cash App to request that $50 your cousin owes you. Actually, finally, getting that $50. Easily divvying up those pizza and wing checks before your boys have a chance to slip out. Tipping the delivery guy when you're flat out of cash. Hearing an awesome musician on the train home and tipping their cash tag. Sending everyone in your family group chat a dollar just because. Splitting the cost of tickets to that really expensive sporting event you were afraid you were going to have to foot the bill for. Watching your paycheck grow without you lifting a finger. Collecting all that money for your fantasy football winnings. Or at least easily shelling out that money for your fantasy football dues. Getting paid to read a wonderful ad script from my good friends at Cash App. Sending, spending, saving, splitting, tipping, donating, gifting, or just typing numbers, all with the number one finance app in the App Store, that's money. That's Cash App. Download Cash App from the App Store or Google Play Store today to create your own cash tag. Listen, I'm not a narcissist, but I know that the people in my family love seeing photos of me and my family and my kid And why wouldn't they, right? There's nothing better. No better way to put a smile on your loved one's face than to share a special photo. So this holiday season, give the gift that keeps on giving memories. Whether it's for grandparents who adore seeing the grandkids' latest antics or a friend who loves capturing every moment, the skylight frame is the perfect gift to bring joy and connection into any home. It's easy to use. You can set it up effortlessly, do some instant sharing, no app or subscription required. It just takes a minute. It's also got a gift mode. It's the ultimate surprise. You can preload your favorite photos before gifting the skylight frame. So they open it up. They can enjoy it immediately. This is better than social media. It's private. You don't have to share it with the world. Also, Skylight is a top-rated brand with over a million happy customers and thousands of five-star reviews. And for a limited time, get 20% off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to ca.skylightframe.com slash hockey. That's right. To get 20% off your Skylight Frame, just go to ca.skylightframe.com slash hockey. That's ca.skylightframe.com slash hockey. What's up, champs? Welcome to another episode of the Short Shifts Fantasy Hockey Podcast brought to you by Keeping Carlson. I'm your host, Jeremy Brasillo, and joining me tonight, Shams Benamor. Shams, how are you doing? Uh, doing okay, just doing the classic a couple cross of my fingers, hoping my goalie gives me a zero pointer because he's currently in the negative. But uh, the way this Merzlikens game's going, and it's 5 5 in the third, you never know. It could be 8 8 by the end. I'm Finish the sentence. Yeah, it was a wild second period, especially in that Columbus Tampa game. But uh, unlike the Nashville Predators last night, we have the correct hosts starting the game for us. Uh, that was one of the weirdest penalties I've ever seen. Uh, so let's jump into the headlines. First up, the big unfortunate injury news Alex Ovechkin is out four to six weeks with a broken was it the tibia or the fibula one of those leg bones i know thankfully he avoided a more serious knee injury the breaks often heal faster than the ligaments uh unfortunate to be without one of the game's star players for that long yeah luckily it's only a fracture i'm not sure how much the difference between a break and a fracture is but the nice thing is is that i know we don't want to be um you know, I say four to six weeks is a return as nice, but as uh, you were mentioning before, Jeremy, is that this could have been anything with the way it was looking. And uh, with that in mind, it's this top line looks, you know, obviously much less 
or without uh, Ovechkin, but it's uh, Strom with Protoss and Mashapani. Now, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not saying rush to get him, but Mashapani does have a history of scoring goals when he was with uh, the Flames. So maybe keep an eye on him, put him on your watch list, and if he looks interesting, maybe give him a shot with the extra ice time he has. Definitely. I, I'm i not too interested in the Protosses or the Mangiapanis of the world, but you could do worse for a streamer. They're going to get lots of minutes. The Caps are a wagon this year. So why not? In other injury news, Freddie Anderson, we finally figured out what's wrong with him, and it's not positive. He has a knee injury that requires surgery, which means he's out 8 to 12 weeks. Uh, so Kochetkov and Martin will have the net for the foreseeable future. Kochetkov played last night. Martin's playing tonight. I actually think Martin's playing pretty well, so maybe that's going to be you know, more of a, not really a 50-50, but more of a 1A, 1B than kind of you'd initially think when you hear the name Spencer Martin as the second goalie. Do you think there's much value here? I assume Kochetkov's owns just about everywhere, especially with Freddie being hurt, but any advice? Um, he's not going to have the, the best numbers as he is their third goalie, but like Martin in situations where a win is valuable in like leagues that you get a lot of points for it or in categories leagues, I would not be afraid to start Martin in situations where maybe it's a, a lesser opponent or in situations where you might be fine, you know, giving up uh, your save percentage category. And you're just going for wins. But overall, they have played him a decent amount last year when they had injury issues. So they're not afraid to play Martin. I don't think this is going to be one of the situations where Kokechov gets like every game and like back to backs included. Yeah, as the back-to-back yesterday and today shows, they definitely aren't going to be doing that. I will give my usual boilerplate warning with Hurricanes goalies. The Hurricanes are the kings of shot suppression. Last night, uh, Kochetkov only faced 20 shots. He saved 19 of them, and they won, so that's a good result. Tonight, Spencer Martin has only faced 20, but he's currently on the hook for a 3-2 loss, unless something's happened in the last five minutes. So... You know, you're playing with fire a bit there because even though the Hurricanes are a good team, you very easily could get, you know, a 3-2 loss with 17 saves, which is not a lot of fantasy points for your fantasy team. Uh, One more goalie outchery this time. Alexander Georgiev is off the IR. He's playing pretty well against the aforementioned Caps right now. I think he's in line for the win. So get him back in your lineup. Uh, I... I think he's probably going to start more often than Anunin is. Like, that seems like he's righted the ship from earlier this year. On to some more injury news. Zach Hyman left the last Edmonton game and apparently will be out four to seven days. Victor Arvidsson got moved to IR and isn't playing tonight, but he is eligible to come back at any time because he's already missed a week. It's just a retroactive IR probably a paper move to get someone in for Hyman. With those absences, the first line is Pug Colson, McDavid, Dreisaitl, and the second line is Skinner, R&H, Kapanen. I uh, jokingly, well, not jokingly, like half seriously in our short shifts chat commented that Kapanen was kind of interesting to me. I am a sucker for the McDavid third wheels, and with how bad Skinner has been this year, I was like, oh, Kasperi Kapanen could be like moderately useful on the wing of McDavid or Dreisaitl, and now he's getting that chance. We will see if he does anything with it today and Saturday, presumably. But uh, I don't know. I I said that, and it's more like a deep streamer, not like a go get him now type of thing. Uh, anything to add to these Edmonton guys? Yeah, the scary thing too is is that. Um... I know we want to always be looking at the lines and when we see a one that's interesting, you want to go rush to the ad button. But keep in mind is that their next game is to Saturday where I think literally every team except two are playing. So I hope you can't fit them in your roster at that day. And then after that, I believe, I forget exactly, I think it's either Friday, Saturday or Saturday. Yeah, it's Friday, Saturday next week. They only play two games. So Maybe keep an eye on who's there, and then if you're interested, like try to pick them up middle of next week because knowing the Oilers, 
the lines could change 15 times before their next game. So I wouldn't be putting too much on this. And with that long gap in between the Saturday game and the next game, those guys could be healthy again and then taking over these interesting spots that you have for your pod cousins or your cabinets. Yeah, a long gap and short-term injuries means I'm not particularly interested. Uh, like you said, you probably can't fit them for either of your next two games unless you have a very no-bench type of league. That's probably just informational, keep an eye on, not immediately actionable. Vince Dunn is out for at least another two weeks, according to the coach. Seems like they're taking it very slow with his injury. I mean, he's already been skating for two to three weeks. I guess this is good news for Brandon Montour, who's been on an absolute tear since Dunn got hurt. But I'm sure this is frustrating for Vince Dunn owners like myself. Uh, What do you know about Alex Petrangelo, though, who is not playing tonight for a day-to-day reason, apparently? Yeah, there's not much news. I believe there was some talk about him. I forget if he was uh, he left the game late or if he was just like smarting after a hit. But there were some concerns with uh, how he ended last game. And then they ended up calling a, a defenseman up and people were starting to pontificate what was going on. And it looks like it was actually him being hurt. It's just an upper body injury that we know right now. And uh Basically, it's just going to have to be a wait and see right now. I don't know how much uh, their lines are going to be, but he was only playing power play two. So with uh, Noah Hannafin as the second, so there could be a new forward in there that might be able to get a small boost and something to keep in mind. I believe they're doing well today, but if he's out for any extended time, this might be a ding on either goalie because he's such a good you know, defensive defenseman that no matter who they add up, there's going to be not much able to replace him. So not news on how long it's going to be, but other than that, just going to cross your fingers that uh, the goalies can keep it up without him in place. Yeah, the only semi-bright thing here is that uh, the next week has some very busy schedules, so it's possible if you roster five defensemen, you're not really losing a game from him. You're just replacing him with a slightly worse option off of your bench probably plenty of streamable options next week too. So timing wise, this isn't terrible for fantasy managers on the defenseman outchery train. Chris Letang is back. He has not reclaimed power play one and is on power play two instead, but get him back in your lineup. I don't think there's much else to say here. You have anything on this one? The one thing I noticed is that it's really nice. Is that, you know, obviously we'd want him to point and be in our power play two start, the greatest, but I kind of look at him as like uh, Shabbat is that even if he's not getting that prime position at the power play one, he's shooting and blocking a lot. So assuming that you have the bagger stats in your fantasy league, this is still a nice addition and maybe possibly someone you can try to target off of someone else if they're annoyed that uh, he's not getting his points. I am definitely a Latang fan for those peripherals. I got him off waivers in the league. I drafted him a couple At one point, he was my only healthy defenseman in Kukupful and then got hurt. So I have, you know, a very thin, thin line back there. Uh, But with that, let's go to our break. And when we come back, we'll talk about some hot and cold players. Watching a hockey game live. Enough said, right? It's the best. I love being able to like actually see the, the hit happens. And then you look at your app and you're like, your player and your fantasy team got the hit that you saw live. It's crazy. Uh, you got to go live to experience it. And of course, to go to hockey games, you need to buy tickets. And that's where our friends over at Game Time come in. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I'm taking a look now. Let's say you're in Montreal. You want to see a Habs game. I'm looking at the Golden Knights against the Canadians uh, on uh, November 23rd. That looks like it's going to be a fun game. Nick Suzuki against his uh, drafting team. And you you just get a really great view. I'm looking at it now of like what your options are. Like cheapest ticket, a hundred dollars all in. You can see how that looks. Pretty good. Kind of far back. I'm sure every ticket is fine. Uh, but then you know if you want to spend two twenty four, I'm seeing there's a like 
hundred section center ice look looks incredible right so you got you got to check out the game time app i really like the ability to see like how your seat is going to look when you're deciding which tickets you're going to buy also if you're looking for a spur of the moment thing game time has last minute deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts they also have exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football basketball baseball concerts comedy theater and more Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code THPN for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code THPN for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. The 2024-25 NHL season still has that new car smell, and the action is heating up at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. It's super easy for first-timers to get started at DraftKings Sportsbook. Try betting on something simple, like picking a team to win. You can also pick on a player to score a goal. You can bet on a whole bunch of things. And if you're new to DraftKings, listen up. New customers bet 5 bucks to get $150 in bonus bets if your bet wins. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code THPN. That's code THPN. PN stands for the Hockey Podcast Network for new customers to get $150 in bonus bets if your bet wins when you bet just five bucks. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. In New York, call 877 8 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y 467 369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ice welcome back and we mentioned some hot and cold players it's kind of for the cold is a team because uh shams this morning put quinton byfield onto our trello board and by virtue of time zones and my sleep schedule shams almost always starts the trello board and i take a look at it a couple hours later and i saw byfield on there and i'm like yeah he's been cold but so have Alex LaFerriere, Kevin Fiala, and Brant Clark. And we I looked a bit closer, and basically everyone on the Kings who is not Kopitar or Kempe has really been hurting you recently. So let's go through these guys and decide who's worth a keep or not. Why don't you start us off with Byfield, Sham, since that was the one you pointed out. Byfield has been basically the my biggest appointment or disappointment. I think I had him, I forget which round, but I drafted him in the first half of the couple draft thinking, you know, Hey, he's going to be top line, top power play like last year, but this year he's, you know, in that nebulous, we'll call it a third line. If you want to put to as the second line with Fogel and LaFerriere. And basically what he's doing is that he's doing nothing. He's got basically, he's very consistent with getting, a shot and two hits. Basically, if you bank those, he's getting nothing else. He has zero points in the last three games. And the thing was, is that he had a uh, a goal and assist in a game, and I believe an assist before that, which made you think you had hope. But he just went right back to that one <laughs> shot, two hits. And basically it got to a point where I'm like, oh, he has the pedigree. He has the whatnot. Like, But I ended up cutting bait. I cut him for my team last Sunday and then someone ended up putting in, I forget how much, like a decent uh, fat bin, like $30. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to let myself be free. And then his first game, he plays off of my uh, roster. One shot, two hits. I am fine with just letting this person go as I've done it myself. And I recommend you do the same. I agree with you. I'm a huge Byfield fan. I have him in a keeper league where you keep seven players each year. And I actually kept him this year as like a kind of preparation for the future. I kept like him and Slavkovsky trying to hit some home runs. And I think he's played his way out of my top seven going into next year. Uh, about a hundred players are kept between all the teams in that league. And I don't know if I'd be keeping him with some of my other options, but I do like the player a lot. One thing I mentioned is that he seemed more fantasy relevant as a winger last year. That may be because he was the winger with Kopitar and Kempe, but also he's been pushed back to center this year. He's been kind of playing. It's either second or third line center. I'll call it 2A and 2B, his line and the Deneau line. 
but centers have a lot more ice to cover, a lot more defensive responsibilities. They may be actually trying to develop a all around player instead of letting a fantasy asset go off. So I think that could be part of it. If he gets moved back to wing, I may speculatively pick him up. He's at least been on the power play recently, I guess, but that's not much. Next up, speaking of on the power play, Alex LaFerriere has come back down to earth. He's got no points in his last four, only one goal in his last eight. And he, uh, if you remember, had some Blake Coleman-like tendencies where he was just going to score goals and not really get assists. He's still averaging a hair under two and a half shots per game and has power play one. And I think he's at like two hits per game for the season, which is pretty good. I'm giving him a bit of leash in banger leagues. I like the PP1, especially the position in it he's playing. And I like the hit and shot volume. And I think the points will slowly trickle back. If he loses power play one, I think that's about where I'm ready to let go. Am I a bit too bullish on random dude that nobody drafted? I think it depends on how deep your league is. Personally, if he's currently your bottom roster guy, I have a feeling that you're probably safe to let him loose and then give him a shot or uh, give someone else a shot. But maybe if you're in the deeper leagues where maybe there's not obvious people that like a power play one is that valuable to you because you can't possibly ever get a person maybe. But honestly, I forget who, like I was talking to people before and I was telling them, you know, to drop LaFerrier. And also on top of it is that we're mentioning that Byfield and him were on the top power play. That was because they had a five forward power play. However, it went, I believe it was zero for five last game. So I have a feeling we're probably going to see a new power play for the next game. So I wouldn't be putting too much thought on who's currently on the top power play. And we'll see how it kind of fleshes out for the Saturday game. I agree with you there. I think I have it in the Brent Clark section of our card that the five forward power play just seems to never last regardless of the team. And especially when they aren't scoring, I'm wondering if that's going to be over by Saturday. Like you said, one thing in favor of dropping LaFerriere and any other King for that reason, or for that reason is their schedule kind of sucks. They had a two game week this week. They played Wednesday. Their next game is a busy Saturday this week. Then next week in general is busy as all get out. Like Monday and Saturday are moderately busy. 30 plus teams play Wednesday and Friday. So you're at most getting two games from him. If he's your ben- a bench guy or most getting two games next week. And then the week after he has another two game week. So it may be one of those where you can kind of push him to the curb. Hope nobody picks him up and add him coming out of your, you know, December 8th through 15th matchup, if we're looking that far ahead. This is one guy I wouldn't be dropping, though. Kevin Fiala. He's got no points in his last six. He's still shooting a decent amount, at least, but less than last year. And he's on power play one again. uh, Hard to judge who's really on power play one with five forwards. It's interesting because when I saw Kevin Fiala having a cold start and getting benched by the coach, I immediately went to, oh, Kevin Fiala is like the poster boy for second half guys. And I looked at the stats. He definitely was a cold starter and hot finisher in 2020, 2021 and 2021, 2022. But the last two seasons, he was more consistent. So I'm not sure if I'd be willing to bet the house on a Kevin Fiala scorching second half like you used to be able to. Uh, I hesitate to call him a buy low because I do think there's some risk. I think. LA has been managing to win games. I think they may be playing a slightly more balanced style and maybe he's a 65 point guy, not a 75 to 80 point one. Am I too low on Fiala here? I don't know. I'm kind of the same, but the nice thing is, is that we mentioned about the power play, not knowing what's going to become. Unless there's a major shakeup, I have a feeling that other than Kopitar and Kempe, I feel like Fiala is pretty safe for that third spot, unless they do some abomination of a split power play, which would be even worse. So I think he's pretty safe there. And then with that in mind, having that exposure and hopefully water under the bridge with the, it feels like he gets benched by 
any coach once a year. So at least he's gotten that by. I feel like he has still with the decent shots, pretty set for the top power play. I'd be willing to keep him. He's going to be one of those guys probably where you're just going to have to, you know, take your medicine with the cold streaks and hopefully comes back. And I have a feeling he will get those goals. Yeah, I think uh, my thing is I don't think I'd be trading for him unless you can get him, you know, for super low. I have seen him dropped in a couple of my leagues, but those are my 12 team leagues. So that's, you know, a bit different of a calculus. And he's he's also been on a a bad plus minus bender where he's been like minus one or minus two in, I think, eight straight games. And so if your league is dumb and a clown league and counts plus minus, <laughs> He's been hurting you, and some of my less informed league mates rage dropped him at that. Uh, to be clear, though, do you agree with me when I say that I would rank Fiala over Laferriere over Byfield, or do you have a slightly different ranking? I would have to say, honestly, at this point, it's I have Fiala and then a big gap, and however you want to put the other two, you decide, but I have no interest in either of them. Okay, yeah, big gap. I, my gap's a bit smaller. Uh, I like Laferriere and don't like Fiala. Like, Fiala constantly is on my do not draft li- list for one reason or another, but that may be my own personal team building biases creeping in. Uh, last one, we had Brent Clark, who I won't ask you to rank with these guys because he's a defenseman, and that's an apples to oranges comparison. They're both fruits, but you still can't compare them. Uh, what do we have to say about Brent Clark? Well, first is we had that issue with the five-person power play, but hopefully that should be set into a position to fix itself. And in the last many games, I can't even count it all right now because there's so many zeros I see. He only has one goal. But the nice thing is, is that other than the last game where he had zero shots, that game was just so weird on both ends that I wouldn't really put too much thought on how either the Kings or Buffalo played. That day, but before that, he had a five shot game with a one and then four and four. He's just shooting all the time and he's blocking all the time. He's basically the ultra powered version of what we like to talk about. You know, sometimes we bring up uh, Wallman, those kind of guys. Is that even without the points, those shots are just so off the wall and having the like multiple four and five block sh- shot uh, nights as well. I would be all over him if someone dropped him per- personally i wouldn't be depends on how low you could get this trade asset i would not be spending too much but if you could get him for cheap either off the waiver wire for a fab bid or a trade where someone's just visibly upset with the guy i would be interested to grab him but uh for that not really had high on the points maybe could be one of those situations where maybe not as bad as I was with Calgary that the goals might be just dried up as a team and the defenseman is just going to take a side hit with that as well. Yeah, I wouldn't be offering a trade for him unless, you know, you offer a guy that you're going to drop anyway. Definitely would be interested off the waiver wire. I think he's a pretty good defenseman, probably a, a sec, low second or high third defenseman for most people in leagues that count blocks. I'm consistently impressed with the LA coaching staff across like multiple head coaches, just the amount they convince their defensemen to block shots. Because if you think of like Sean Dersey blocked a ton of shots in LA and continues to in Utah, even as an offensive defenseman, uh, you got Mikey Anderson, Drew Doughty's always blocked a ton. Like it, it definitely seems like a culture thing in LA that you step in front of shots. A Kopitar is always near the top of the shot blocked boards for forwards. So kind of a, fascinating thing that that's lasted for honestly a decade as far as i can remember that king's defensemen are always good for block shots you had one hot streak to go over in the aforementioned columbus game i believe dmitry Voronkov continued his hot streak how hot is he so there may have been five more goals since i wrote this down but basically through the half of this current game and uh, the three previous games, he has three goals and two assists. And the interesting thing is, is that with the addition of Kent Johnson, they shuffled their lines a bit. And he is now at, on the top line with both Archenko and Monaghan and on the top power play. So this is not one of those situations where like 
Oliver, the guy that always hits, was getting some goals. So you're like, okay, that's not going to last. The interesting thing is, is that, you know, obviously they're not going to have a game like today every time, but they have a history of scoring. And he's on the top line, a top power play with two players that have the history of scoring themselves. Now, the issue is, is that they don't really have the greatest schedules. So they play Saturday next. And then I believe many busy days next week. There's not many uh, good schedules next week either. So check if you could fit them in your roster. But I'm always interested in top line, top power play guys. And this person's doing that and is producing at that spot. So I wouldn't have any doubts. I've taken, you know, for example, if you have him in your free agency pool, I would be taking, uh, dropping Byfield and LaFerriere in a second to grab him. You know, schedule outstanding. I agree with that. Uh, I actually just looked. He's available in our 16-team Tier 1. Unfortunately, I only have one move left and would prefer not to use it on someone that won't help me this week since I can't fit him anymore this week. Here's a question for you, though. The person who's taken the biggest uh, hit to their deployment because of this is Igor Chinnikov. He does have goals in two straight games, but he's down to second line and second power play. He actually has zero power play time either of the last two games, although I think that's because of a low number of power plays. He's only taken five shots over his last five games. Time on ice is close to 15, then it's 17 to 19 he was getting earlier. Is the uh, Yegor Chinnikov apple juiced, orange juiced? What's the fruit reference I want there? Basically, my rule that I go to is, as I referenced before, is I want top line, top power play. If you have that, you get all the rope you want for a long time. But if you don't have that, as long as you're producing, I'm interested or is willing to kind of, you know, look away. But as we mentioned before, is that he doesn't have the greatest schedule coming up. So if he starts showing signs of being cold, depending on, you know, if he's your bottom roster guy, which there's a good chance he is, depending on how deep your league is, is that I would be willing to let him go once he becomes cold. But with the way the team's scoring, I might be able to, you know, I wouldn't be rushing to drop him, but if he has like two or three games, maybe where he's not showing you something, or if you really need to pick up a streamer to fit up, uh, you know, save your week this week, maybe I'd be a little bit more open to that, but we'll see how it goes. It's with the lines changing. Someone could get injured. He could be back into something interesting again. I'm definitely giving a bit of wait and see on Columbus's new lines, because not only did Voronkov just return a few games ago, Kent Johnson returned uh, either last game or this game and is also in the top six. So I think they're going to be finding some combinations that work well. And I don't want to panic drop someone. So if you've got the luxury of being able to hold a guy, give him another week or two, see what the lines look like, see if Columbus is still better than being the worst team in the league that a lot of te- people thought they were. They've had some pretty good fantasy value this year. So I'd hate to drop one of their guys a bit too early. With that, thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed our show, please consider joining the Keeping Carlson patron group at keepingcarlson.com slash patron, where super supporters receive ad-free episodes and you can interact with Brian, Elon, the Short Shifts crew, and hundreds of other talented fantasy managers on our active Discord server. Please check out gamedaytweets.com to get all the best info from Twitter without having to slog through the rest of that place, including team-by-team and searchable tweets by player name and goalie start predictions. Visit that site and the other great sites we use to research our episodes with at Yahoo, Frozen Tools, and Natural Stat Trek. Our intro and outro music were created by Pat Roach. Until we see you next time, play smart and keep your ships short. If your day sounds like... We need the report ASAP. You deserve Medella. If you've persevered through... You deserve this rich golden lager with a crisp but refreshing taste. Or if you overcame. Two more reps, two more. You deserve this ice cold reward. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. Drink responsibly, beer imported by Crown Port, Chicago, Illinois. How do you feel when you switch to Geico and save on your car insurance? It's like going to work on one Thursday morning and thinking to yourself, just one more day until Friday. 
But then somebody in the elevator says, Happy Friday! Then you check your phone quickly and discover today is actually Friday. So yes, happy Friday, random stranger in the elevator. Happy Friday indeed. Yep, switching and saving with GEICO feels just like that. Get more with GEICO.